Hi fiends, thanks for joining me on Donna Jean's Coffee House of Horror. I am so excited because there's somebody as my guest today who I love dearly. I love literally like my family. In fact, I call her the daughter of my heart. And if you have been following me for quite a while, you've seen everything there is to know about Monique Dupree's history. We've talked about her modeling for comic books. We've talked about her being in trauma movies. We've talked about her involvement with wrestling. So if you want to know in depth about any of those, the links will be in the description of my interview. And now I'm so excited to introduce to you my dear, my family, my love, Monique Dupree. Hello there, Monique. Hello, that's so heartwarming. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, you know, it not only is Women in Horror Month, but it's also Black History Month. Yes. So it being Black History Month, how could I not think about you? And Women in Horror Month, how could I not think about you? Oh, look at that. You are beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I really, truly appreciate that. Um, coming off the heels of some really <laughs> dark stuff and um, now kind of grasping my my inner light again, you know, it's I'm starting to feel more of myself um, than I have in the past maybe six, six or seven months. Well, you have had trauma upon trauma upon trauma. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, um, a couple of the, the big things amongst the many things that happened was your house being burglarized and everything being stolen and then it burned da burning down. Right. Yes. So boy, where did you go from there? <laughs> I mean, you would think there was nowhere to go, but up, but, um, but no, it just kept on coming because, uh, then my, my younger brother passed away. And I mean, it was just so many different uh, things that happened. And I mean, that was just in September. So that's still um, hitting pretty hard, but I kind of learned to just embrace the time that we had. And to, instead of, you know, sulking or being upset, which I have my sad days, um, my husband just found one of his old phones today, one of my brother's old phones today, and was able to link it up and was like, here, I, I wanted to make sure I can get this going for you first before I gave it to you. But here, I want you to to have this. So then the emotions came on all over again. And this just happened like two hours ago. But oh I kind of used that energy and remember his words of saying, you know, that he felt like I was a dynamo and there is nothing I can't do. So I'm like, well, I can do this. I can um, I can re-embrace myself and make her bigger and and better and hopefully brighter uh, than before. And it was only when I really started opening myself up again, did opportunities start to come. So I also learned that uh, not that, I mean, we're usually our own worst enemy, but when you sit in darkness, you can't really find the light. And I hate to sound so cliche, but it's really what I experienced, you know? So the more I'm coming out of it, the more opportunities are coming to me. And boy, am I so humbled and happy to see all of these different things come the way I, I speak it into existence and then all of a sudden I get, you know, messages or calls and, and it's happening. So I'm, I'm happy. And you've taken so much of that and embraced it with your family and uh, anyone who, who knows you or knows of you or have heard you knows you have uh, 10 children and you also have at this point grandchildren Yep. and a new grandchild too, I might add, which is just amazing and beautiful. I know he's so cuddly. He's just this little pudge pudge face. I love him so much. <laughs> and you've taken that and that you all create art together. And in fact, yes. I'm kind of, I'm wearing my candy woman shirt. 
Yes. Is, uh, any of you who don't know, uh, Tony Todd is Monique's brother. So it honors him and it honors her. And yes. then I've got my uh, Candyman earrings made Yay! by Monique in her shop. So look, look up Monique's shop on Etsy. It's the Thomas Kingdom. And fun fact, those earrings was actually the artwork created from our now 14-year-old daughter. And the artwork on the T-shirt is from Dennis Woolman, who is an amazing artist. And he's responsible for a lot of my comic book art that, uh, that I have and that will be coming out. Uh, in the next coming years, this year and next year. So, well, that's yay, exciting. thank you. <laughs> that's exciting too, that there's more, you know, more comic book art. And uh, just uh, we're, your work as a as a model for the comic books um, was just mind blowing. And you. you're still embracing all of that love, even with the darkness behind you. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, again, I'm so happy to, uh, actually feel myself rise out of it because I don't think I had ever really truly experienced something that, that was so dark to run so concurrently, <laughs> you know, just like back to back to back to back to back. Mm -hmm. Um, but we have the positives, like you said. Um, I mean, over the past year and change, with my other granddaughter will be a year old, uh, March the 9th. Oh. And my other grandson, you know, just came into the world February the 11th. I have all of these convention appearances. I have movie appearances. I had my first wrestling appearance since House of Hardcore. And I, when I say that, I don't mean like Impact Wrestling where uh, I'm an extra sometimes, or I work behind the scenes. I mean, actually getting out there in the squared circle again. So I'll be doing that March the 11th. And I believe you pronounce it Decatur, Illinois at new wrestling revolution. So I'm very excited about that. And I hope that that opens the door to a lot more wrestling appearances because I miss it. And I know that that was such a great love for you. I actually learned what little I know about wrestling from you. And that's, it's been, it, it's, your passion about it is just so amazing. And me getting to learn from the production end of things, uh, you know, thanks to Tommy Dreamer, who uh, taught me everything. And, you know, he used to, he used to joke, you know, you have to learn how to be a, a mini Tommy Dreamer, because I was like, why do you like, why do you have me doing everything? And he's like, well, that's what I do. I do everything. And this is my promotion. So I want to teach you how to do everything too. So I love that. I do miss the production end of things. Maybe a wrestling promotion at some point in time will contact me and go, hey, we'd love for you to help us build the show. Because uh, that was definitely one of the things that I helped uh, to do with House of Hardcore. So we'll see. Now, I know you are getting ready to go out to the airport. Uh, do you want to share a little bit of where you're going to be? I know you're going uh, mad, mad cap crazy to a lot of events. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to Vegas uh, this weekend for Impact Wrestling. Um, it's no surrender. And I know any of you that are wrestling fans know that it's, it's going to be pretty big. And Busted Open is going to uh, be present uh, as well. And they're doing a show uh, right after No Surrender, like a after party type deal. Dave LaGreca is making his uh, debut into Impact Wrestling. So that's pretty awesome. So I'm going to be there until Monday because, you know, you come in a little bit earlier, you leave a little bit later. And, and then I'm going to uh, Denver. I'm doing something uh, a little personal there. But while I'm there, uh, I hope to meet with the people from Colorado wrestling, uh, Colorado festival of horror, uh, Brett and his wife, they are so amazing. And when we did the convention this past year, they became family and we fell in love with the whole vibe of everybody there. And I said, what can I do to help? What can I do to make this, uh, bigger and better? Because that's essentially, that's what you want a convention to do every year and right. the convention was great and I know that it can be 
even greater. So I was saying, even if we're not yes this year coming up, um, I would like to know what can I contribute with what I do in order to make it bigger and, and better. And we're supposed to discuss some things. And so I'm, I'm fingers crossed for that because what I would like to do in a perfect world is have my new movie, The Beautiful Ones, debut there at the Colorado Festival of Horror. So that is what I'm trying to marry together. Right. <laughs> it's one of my one of my hopes. I'm I'm still waiting for the director to um, give me a trailer so that I can show them what kind of vein it's in to to see if in fact they are interested. So you know I'm doing everything on on every end. Even though the beautiful ones was a movie that you know I I acted in. You know I told them I will promote. I will you know put you in contact with places where it could be seen. Um, it's my black girl, Harley Quinn, uh, imagining, oh. you know, so it's like, I, you know, and when I say that, I just mean anybody that knows Harley knows her personality and she does not have it all there. But at the same time, she kind of does. I mean, she, she, you know, she was a therapist. I play a therapist. Um, and my, my character, when she unravels is very much like, what if Harley Quinn were black and just wearing leather? <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was, it was a lot of fun to do. And of course I couldn't deny the fact that he named it after a Prince song, the beautiful ones, because he's a Prince fan too. So I was like, okay, so this is just a perfect world for me. Right. Um, and I got to do a lot of things that I'd never done before, like my death scene, uh, which you would just have to watch when it comes out. So I'm I'm just trying to show people that I appreciate them to the point where I want to go the extra mile for these productions, for the because I don't have to, but why not? Why not do that? You are part of a project. Put it out there. Right, right. Now this film is it completed at this point and yes yep so any idea when it's supposed to be premiering it's supposed to uh premiere this year but what he wants to do is uh allow it to hit the festival circuits first yeah. and i did post the poster before but uh when i'm when i'm done here i'm going to repost the poster and just tag you Great. in it so right. that um so that you know because there's so many things that i post uh so it it should be coming somebody should be able to see it this year it's just a matter of how long is he going to want it to hit the convention circuit and you know that makes sense a lot of uh films do that and right. really that's where a lot of people's first experience of a film is especially now that indie films are finally getting a little bit more recognition, which yep. they have been getting all along anyway, it's kind of great to have that as an initial open door. Right. So, fantastic. I'm going to keep my eye out for that. Yeah, I'm really proud of my performance. And I don't say that a lot because I'm so hypercritical of myself. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like to watch myself in dailies. I don't like to look at any of it. Um, because then I'll find something wrong while everybody else m may be looking at what's right. Yeah. So I don't do any of that, but I, I feel my performance and I feel where I need to be better because I always want to grow with everything that I'm doing. I know you're all, you've always been ever since I've known you, um, so strongly family-based as well, that you yes. get so much of your power from the love of your family and sharing it with them. Um, yes. You know, you've been involved with doing so much. You and Saint go to shows together. Now you yes. and, and some of your kids go with you and with their art. Would you want yep. to talk a little bit about, about that, about the, the Thomas? Uh, our our, our art? empire, what I consider to be our empire. And yeah, it's pretty funny because my name, my my last name is Dupree, even though my married last name is Thomas. So most of our children are Dupree Thomas. 
So um, it it turned from a duo, me and Saint, to a trio of me, Saint, and Inari. And Inari is our, I mean, we have three artists in the house, but Inari is the one that's been getting the most recognition because she's a powerhouse. It's like me as an artist, because she, you know, Saint is the one that taught her, but Saint is a, a lot more reserved. So he'll create something and he'll go, Mo, I need you to help me put this out here. I create something and I go, Bleh, and just <laughs> put it all out there. So Inari is the same way, except she didn't have the platform in which to do it. So mm -hmm. I introduced her to my platform. And when I get, uh, you know, when people ask me to come to conventions, you know, I would go, I love to. And what I normally do sometimes, because I don't want everybody to think I'm doing it all the time, I would be willing to take a short on anything that the convention is offering me in exchange for Inari having a table too oh. or, or, or being there too, as long as the transportation, you know, flights and hotel are provided. I just want to put her out there. So mm -hmm. whatever shortcuts or, you know, I, I sit on the back burner so that she could be put out there. That's what we're supposed to do for our children. Right. You know, so it's, it's her first saint second and me third at this point in my head anyway um that's kind of how i do things and we've been you know touring the country and i'm i'm hoping that we start again because i didn't have anything uh initially planned for this year for the three of us but um that seems to be changing i'm i'm waiting for the ink to dry for announcements but uh even um talking to catastrophic con about uh doing a a convention with them i'll be doing a convention with them in new york i think it's purchase new york but uh i just talked to big apple comic con as well i know for sure that i'll be there i i'm trying to see if i can get the rest of my family there as well even if it's just in a you know artist alley uh vending type situation i love when our presence is felt all throughout the convention because she's amazing. And she just won a contest here in Baltimore. She was in a, a youth talent competition where it was all types of youth talent. It was singers, poets, uh, an, another visual artist and, and her art. And she won first place. And I was so proud of her because it was a last minute thing. And it was just supposed to be the three of us to go to the show. And then her sister showed up and then her brother showed up and then her other oh. brother showed up. So it became like a, a family thing. And that that's what we do. I can't do a lot of this without Saint. He is uh, my heart and my soul. And I love him dearly. And I'm just, after 30 years, we're just... <laughs> trying to survive this crazy game of life you know well, you two are such a perfect uh a, a perfect match of balance you know yes. with the laid back and go with the flow and the let's get driven let's get moving and how all of that balances each other out i wholeheartedly agree because <laughs> I am the wild child all over the place. And he's the one that will grab my legs and pull them down. I'm like, okay, Mo, just a little bit, <laughs> a little bit calmer. We got, you know, uh, so I love that. And what we've been doing now is just basically taking, like you said, everything that we do, I create whatever I feel. So sometimes I feel like creating all my oils which I make specialty oils. Sometimes I want to make earrings and necklaces. Other times I want to make bracelets. I didn't even bring my bracelets down because I didn't have time. Uh, well, I have some over there, but I, you know, create all of these different things, but I have to create them when I feel uh, creative. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't want to churn them out because I have to make money. I want to create them because they make me feel good because I feel like when I put that energy into it, it it's transfers. It, it transfers to somebody else and it makes them in turn feel good. So I didn't really understand that when I was first creating. And, you know, all of the comments that I get back is that 
my jewelry is feel good. It The energy is positive on it. And I want that to continue. So because of that, I don't just churn them out. If I feel like making, you know, 10 or 11 in a night, I'll do that. If I only make one in a week, I'll do that too. Yeah. You know, that's what's important to me is to give someone a piece of light and not, um, I understand that we have to make money, but you you don't have to make money at the detriment of others. I don't want to pass on any negativity to someone else because I've had it done to me so much and and it sits with me sometimes because I allow it to. So I don't want to do that to anybody else. Yeah, it's hard sometimes to learn that lesson that it is. And the world really has gotten bleak around you to try to do what you do and yes. encourage yourself to get up and get out of that. Um, be the light. You're the light for other people, but then you also have to bring it on yourself. Right. I don't, I have a hard time finding um, oftentimes finding people directly around me that will be the light for me when, when I can't. And mm -hmm. That's one of the only problems that I see is that when I'm, I'm burnt out, I need help recharging uh, with, with everything that I do. I mean, people say to me, how do you sleep? And I say, who says that I sleep? Right. Uh, <laughs> I can fall asleep with a cup of coffee in my hand like this until it, the cup starts to fall down and I know I'm tired. It's funny what <laughs> exhaustion can do. <laughs> Yes, it can do some crazy things, but I'm not complaining because I'm grateful that I have work. I'm grateful that there's offers. I have, um, you know, other movies I'm doing. I get to voice a doll uh, with Little Red Rosie that um, I believe I'm filming now in June because we had a, a hiccup and it had to be rescheduled. So I believe that uh, I'm filming that in June in Pennsylvania. So I get to voice a doll and I, you know, I had to go to my brother, my big brother for advice. Cause you know, he's the, the voice King. I feel like he's just the voice period, um, <laughs> male or female. He's just the voice. So I, you know, went to him to get a little bit of advice and um, I'm, I'm hoping that I can do well with that as well. And then I have another movie that I'm doing in uh, Virginia so the Lovecraft Chronicles and I play lead in that. Oh, so. that is cool. So we're we're filling up for the year. I've even had I even have conventions for December right now. Um, Ocean City Comic Con. So awesome. I'm trying to fill in the spaces in between, but I've really been trying to reach out to conventions and anime shows and cosplay shows in the New York and New Jersey area to kind of go back to my roots and my home base uh, and do more things there and introduce uh, Inari more so to that area because she's known in Baltimore, but I want her to be known where our roots were planted. So I'm trying to get shows or even cosplay performances. I did my first drag show this year I saw a, a video <laughs> someone took of that, and that was just amazing. That and it's weird crazy. because I know that I'm not, well, you know, I'm not a drag queen. So right. I was like, well, You're how a queen. would it work? But <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> but they said, well, listen, if you love to, you know, basically be extra, you could perform, you know, you could bring those vibes. You know, we don't care. You can, you know, try it out and see if you like it. And then I tried it and I was like, oh my God, I want to do this, this so again. <laughs> it was like, I had a chance to feel like uh, Beyonce, except not Beyonce, but I got to like <laughs> perform a Beyonce song, wear this cool Beyonce outfit. And for two seconds, people were looking at me like I was Beyonce. <laughs> and I was like, I love this a lot. So yeah, I would I would love to do that again. I've been opening up my horizons to just looking at all things beautiful in performances. Yeah. Um, because I see that the world has caught up. When I did a lot of the stuff that I did, 
it was looked down upon like a uh, pole dancing. I used to teach pole dancing a long time ago to teach women to feel beautiful about themselves. It wasn't actually about the pole dancing. It was the sensuality. It was the just feeling sexy for yourself or for your significant other, or however you wanted to do it. I used to teach classes and I bought a pole and had one in my house and people were calling me, you know, all kinds of really mm -hmm. horrible names. But then now you see that twerking is popular, which I had never, you know, really caught on to. Uh, pole dancing is considered an art now when nobody ever really looked at it as an art when I was doing it. So I was like, the world has caught up to my weirdness, to, you know, my craziness. And so now I'm just trying to continue to do what I do and stand out in a world that's more accepting of all of the stuff that I, I was doing already. Well, it's a good possibility. Some people can look back on some of the uh, things that you've done in the past and be able to appreciate it now. The today's generation can appreciate it now. More. I sure hope so. <laughs> I sure hope so too. I sure hope so too. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I'm just happy to see some kind of evolution. I mean, we still have a long way to go with so many different, uh, you know, facets of, of I can go on and on. And I know that we can go on and on and we're, I know. <laughs> we're trying not to. So I'll just say that, um, you know, there's, there's a lot that mm. still needs to um, be done, but I mm. see some of the change and I appreciate that. I appreciate that for, you know, my family. I appreciate that for other people's families. And just, I've been an artist all my life. I've never really been able to be the nine to five person, which people thought was bad, but where I am like, I'm not a nine to five person. I'm a, you know, 12 to 12 person or a six to six person. Like I can go for hours and hours and hours doing four or five different things which is, you know, like a managerial type of, of deal. But when you run your own business, that's a lot harder than running somebody else's business. It is. It, it is. It really you're, never off. you're never off. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I have my phone is so I have such a horrible habit to the fact that my phone now tells me when to sleep. It, 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 it notifies me of when I should be going to sleep now. And then it puts my stuff on silent. So I won't hear a notification. So I'll just pick up my phone and just start looking at it. Like, did somebody text me? Because my phone won't let me know. Uh, type well, of it does deal. amuse me because the days that I work, um, I care for adults with intellectual disabilities on the days that I don't work from home because my husband and I have our own business too. Right. And I get up at four. And when I text you, you haven't gone to bed yet. So no. I'm getting up and you're just going to bed. Yes. And that just cracks me up. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And times like this, when I know that I'm going to fly, I don't sleep at all unless, um, you know, Saint goes, you know, lay down with me for an hour or something like that. I'll just kind of like lay up under him for a little while before I, I go. And then I'll just get up and I'll go, but I won't be in sleep mode. So that way I can sleep on the plane. Oh. But normally I have a nonstop flight this time. I have a pit stop in Chicago, so it'll be interrupted, but I'll still do whatever resting I can do while I'm on the plane so that when I get off and I get there, I can just be about business. You know, uh, there's a lot of indie uh, filmmakers and actors on that are aware of my show because that's primarily who I talk to. So any of you guys watching this, you know, um, Monique, you are such a physical person. You're so physical. You can move in any way and every way, but you're also so intelligent. So uh, if any of you got you, you know, indie filmmakers out there, get hold of this lady because she can, she can just do it all. I appreciate you saying that because I think that people have a misconception another misconception uh probably not just about me but they'll see that i i may post a a sexy photo or you know 
you see my boobs, but I'm like, how can you not? First of all, you don't understand the problems I have finding bras that fit, but that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> you know, you see stuff like that and you um, deduce from it that I, I lack intelligence for some reason. And I always said, there's a, there's a method to my madness, how I got my first big role. I was dressed really, really sexy. And it, it just caught the guy's eye because he was like, I had yellow hair and you know, I looked like a, he said, I looked like a, um, an action figure. And we started talking and I ended up doing this movie and he was like, wow, you are so intelligent. You know, when I saw you, I just saw looks, but if I hadn't seen that, I would not have connected with you. And, you know, 10 movies later, 10 or 12 movies I've done with this man now, you know, he's responsible for helping me do so much, uh, Darkstone Entertainment, uh, John mm -hmm. Johnson. So I always say there's a method to my madness. I'm not doing it for attention, but it's something that I like. Sometimes I just want to dress sexy. Other times when I'm in jeans and a, a t-shirt like this, people still think it's me trying to be sexy, but I literally have one jeans sneakers and and my my t-shirt that will fit me because none of them will actually fit like this <laughs> unless I get a larger wear like saints oversized shirt so you know I it's, it, everything about you is you are an entertainer right you know? and so I don't think unless you were having a really dismal day of not feeling well mentally and spiritually and right. physically um I don't think you can take the entertainer out of Monique's spirit. So that's know. pretty true. <laughs> but I don't that's not a bad thing though. It's no, I don't thing. think that it's a bad thing at all. I really don't. I really truly don't. I I I love that part of myself because sometimes I get myself out of a rut, which sounds so so strange, but sometimes I entertain myself like I'll be next to Saint and I'll be doing silly things when I'm down and he's like, you're such a strange person. And I was like, I know. And I'm like, I am, I'm such a strange person. And it, it just kind of pulls me out of, you know, where I am, like kind of just, you know, snap out of it. Uh, you're going through a moment, but this is just a moment that it's not going to last forever. It just feels that way because I'm in it. Yes. It's what I try to, it's what I try to say. It's, it's not, it's not easy to do. So I'm not saying it like I'm happy all the time, or this is who you need to be all the time. I'm saying it's okay to have your down times. It's okay to be sad, but why live in it? What, how does it benefit you and the people around you trying to help you? How does it benefit staying there? You know, own it, cry, do what you gotta do, eat, eat a pint of ice cream, I like gelato. Sometimes I do that. And then I go, all right, now it's time for me to do what I need to do to pull myself out of it. If I'm in quicksand, I'm not just going to stand there and do this and just fall into quicksand. I'm going to do everything I can to pull myself out. So that's how I see in my head when I'm in an emotional rut. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fall all the way down and drown in the quicksand. My instinct is to reach and grab and to pull myself out. That yeah. should be your instinct. That's what I, mean, I try to do. And I think it's it's important to know that you need to sometimes give yourself those two minutes to feel bad. Exactly. Feel and then, okay, I've dealt with right. this and now I need to get up and go forward. And it's not pretending that it's not there. Right. It's trying to go forward and what else? what else is there? That part that you said is very important because that's the part that people forget. You know, mm -hmm. they'll go, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to feel bad, you know, or I, I feel okay. They don't, they don't allow themselves that time to just feel what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. See, I allow myself to do that so that when I go to fall back there, I don't, I know I don't want to go back there. It doesn't mean that it doesn't ever happen, but I've identified with that feeling. It doesn't feel great to me. So when I find myself falling back there, I can push back because I know what it feels like. 
or sometimes I just need to sit there for a second. It just depends on the situation. Sometimes I need to sit there for a second and go, this really blows. I, I really don't like this right now. I hate this. I whatever. And then, and then I go, okay, how can I make this better? What can I do? Blah, blah, blah. And then you start doing it. You, it, you have to allow yourself that time sometimes to feel whatever those bad feelings, those horrible feelings, but don't live there. Right. That's, that's my point. Don't, don't live there. Don't, everything is just horrible. Something bad happens. So now everything is horrible that's not true. If you, if you don't start pulling yourself out, you don't get to see the opportunities. You don't get to see the hands that are like, Hey, grab my hand because you're in such darkness that you don't see that you have this help around you while you're saying that you have no help. Right. I know you, when you lost your brother, you know, the grieving was a process and it's still, it's always a process. Absolutely. I, I think we, um, I don't think we ever stop grieving a love, but it's yeah, a different form. Right. And, you know, I know for a while you were posting about that and I was so proud of you that you were because you weren't trying to pretend you didn't feel it. Right. You know, right. And, um, I think other people need to kind of sometimes let each other grieve and just say, I'm just here. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's one of the reasons why I post because I've had, some of my friends and family go, you know, you expose so much of yourself. And I said, well, what if that's one of like what I'm supposed to do in life? We all have something to offer other people. What if my job is to let people know that people that are public figures don't have to pretend that everything is okay or don't have to stay silent when they feel something? Why do I have to shut up because the rest of the world is around me judging? Why should I have to do that? Why can't I just be a human and say what I feel too? Yeah. You know, today sucks. I don't like today. And, and, and that's something that I wanted to get out. I got it out. And, you know, that's pretty much that. What if I am one of the people that's supposed to, to do that, to show people it's okay to express emotion and then be okay again? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's called, to me, it's called being human. I don't know when things changed where that's not a part of being human, being upset and grieving and, you know, all of that stuff, you know, people will go, well, I know that you're, uh, that you're grieving, but you don't have to post about it. Or why do you keep doing, why do you keep posting about this? Or why do you keep, let people go where they need to go to, you know, quell that hurt, that, that grieving that they're going through. I still go through it. I just posted about him uh, mm-hmm. maybe a few days ago because mm-hmm. I found a couple of pictures and I felt the emotion. So I just posted it and I said, I miss mm-hmm. him. It yeah. helps me, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all a thing. <laughs> it is. And I know that growth, happens you know all the time every day you you stop growing you know then you're not alive anymore right exactly hey i'm gonna jump and ask you because i'm intrigued myself personally so what's the deal about this uh lovecraft film that you're gonna be in because i'm a big Uh, hp lovecraft fan uh, yeah (laughs) well i don't i don't have the script yet um i just got the he just i'm going to my um what you call it now, because he just sent me stuff. I will be helping him put it all together. So I asked him, I said, let me know. I need to know what my name is because I I always ask for a backstory or a characterization because I still have to go out there in March for, to get the script and to like really Mm -hmm. look at everything. I just know who my Cthulhu is going to be and who my, um, you know, who my bad guys are going to be, who my good guys are going to be. I know the cast already. Um, But my name is going to be Harriet Lovecraft. Okay. So uh, he said, here's your synopsis. Because like I told you, I I asked for stuff. Mm -hmm. Said creatures have come from unpublished manuscripts created by infamous authors. Descendants of authors are now tasked with hunting down, hunting those creatures down. So that's the basic um, 
synopsis of what we're doing. And this is actually volume three. So oh. I was in a short of H.P. Lovecraft volume two where I was a vampire. I got um, that. Uh, yes. Um, and I, and if you, if you don't, I have to find out where he had it. I think it was, I think it's on their YouTube channel is volume two. Uh, cause he has a volume one, volume two, but this is going to be kind of like, a uh, more of a movie style thing where the other ones were shorts. Okay. Uh, I played, uh, Chainsaw Sally was in it with me. I, uh, I'm sure, you know, Chainsaw Sally. So we were vampires. And we died quickly, but um, <laughs> but I did play a vampire in that. I've um, Saint loves uh, H.P. Lovecraft, so he's also going to be in a movie, and he's going to help to oh. retool the script. However, we you know kind of want to retool it, so I'm excited about that because I'm actually on the ground floor of it. He yeah. didn't want to build too much of it without um, my input, so we have. Um, the basics around and well, if the, you want to do an interview about it when you're ready to oh definitely no, definitely especially know. once we have uh i would love to do an interview like when we're uh when we're filming that's i would love it that's i so think cool. that that would be great and that would be a great promotion for the film uh as well because it's going to take us a while to we're going to do it over the rest of the year you know, starting like summerish, uh, what have you, so that everybody can be there because there's some really talented actors that I've worked with uh, before with Darkstone and with other projects. And we wanted to be able to wait for all of everybody to come together so that uh, the characters are really brought to life. That was, that's, that's important to me. That so. is awesome. We are actually down to two minutes on our 45 <laughs> minutes uh, here in trying to keep short. Um, but uh, please send me a list of where you'll be and I'll make sure that I, po I post it wherever I can post it. Absolutely. And you guys out there, if you have half a chance, travel. Pull up a, something to stream on. Go to the movies. See this lady. Uh, I had to take a picture of us. <laughs> I love you. I love you more. Mwah. Thank you so much for everything always. And the same is here. Just for being yourself. Thank you. Good night, folks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>